Lungi Swakunda is my name. My grandfather gave me that name. I make stuff. I like to create environments. What's the most important is this, like, if there's a feeling, if there's an emotional connection, communicate through feeling. The 1970s, yeah, I mean, there would be certain beaches, you know, reserved for black people. So I would imagine that's where they were. There was a kind of a lot going on politically, but I guess you could never tell from them in their photos. I just love that photo. <laughs> I love it so much. Every time I look at it, I'm like, man, these women are so beautiful. They're gorgeous, they're stylish, they're happy. They're out there living their best lives on our land. Like, what more can you want? Other than it, you know, kind of resonating throughout my work. But I also wanted it to be an invitation, you know, for the people of color and black people that are in this city and who come across that building. Man, I had this really incredible dream. There was a part where I was walking uh, into the ocean and it was this humongous, like, looks like a big tsunami wave, but like still, but then like you could walk through it. So it felt like you were walking through mountains. You know, as I walked out, you know, I met, you know, a bunch of my family members, some present, some passed away. I woke up and I just I couldn't get that image out of my mind of, the mountains and water becoming one. Sometimes the work is incredibly aggressive. I use both barbed wire and razor wire. So barbed wire, I guess they use mostly in farms, but razor wire they use for people, which is far harsher than barbed wire. So it has a very specific purpose, and that is to exclude to harm, um, to inflict violence at all times. The beauty and the aggressive and the violence existing in one space for me is like kind of experiences of life and, and history. And also I think of it as like kind of like trapping someone into a conversation. No one's gonna willingly go to a place that is difficult, that is hard. And so you gotta reel them in. You know, the aim is for the work to follow people home somehow, to haunt them. And you'll find some installations are, I guess, the complete opposite, where it's like about rest, you know, and it's about recharging. Gathering, you know, so the act was for us to be folding sheets. As a child, adults will allow you into a space of information while kind of doing these like domestic acts. This bodily rhythm that is there, that is calming, that is one. And so what ended up being in the video is like the moments in between the folding. The whole installation that that video was made for is called Riderless Assembly. It was from the um, act where a group of black people just, it was illegal for a certain number of black people to gather. <laughs> and so I guess that was where the gathering also came from. I don't like to fear things, you know? I wanted to come close to the thing that people use to invoke fear in people. And I was like, well, I'm gonna familiarize myself with this and I'm gonna use it however I want to so that I will break down that fear so that no one can use this thing against me because now I know it too. Because we also have razor wire in our backyard, but we kind of like hang our clothes on it. <laughs> That's why it was so easy for me to approach it also. I think I was like, I know this thing. I see it all the time, it's part of my home. Okay, let's do this. 
nature in itself right now, as I know it, is a political space, do you know what I mean? The access to it is very much controlled and that not everyone has such an easy access to it is why I'm making work about, you know, nature. I'm not doing this for anyone other than, you know, my family, myself, really, my ancestors. There's still a lot of work to be done alive within me. It's very urgent.